All right, I think we're about ready to get started. Um, my name is Mary Jane Little. I'm the Equine Extension Associate at the University of Kentucky. And um, I guess a little background information on how this club came to be is during COVID when we were all locked down, um, a couple of agents got together and created uh, basic and advanced horse groups and they were so popular and everybody really enjoyed them enough to where um, they said even, you know, when, as we're coming out of COVID and returning back to normalcy, we'd like to still, you know, have this opportunity, you know, maybe you're in a county that doesn't have a 4-H horse club or maybe um, you just need to pick up a couple of hour, extra hours here and there, um, you know, so this is just going to be an opportunity for you all to hopefully learn some new things and get, you um, the opportunity to participate in all of our state events and you know anything that you all are interested in doing. Uh, Dr. Camargo, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I am Dr. Camargo and most of you already know me, but for those of you that don't, I work with Mary Jane and we're excited to see you know this uh, project group um, take off and today's our first meeting. If you guys have any questions at any time, don't hesitate uh, to ask. Maybe you can do like a raise your hand. Does everybody know how to do that? The raise your hand thing. Um, so if you go, so I'm gonna tell you how to do because I saw some people, yep. So you hover your little uh, arrow thing or cursor and then you're gonna see the bottom of your screen says reactions, okay? And with the reaction, you can put there, hover on top of it, and you can put raise your hand. Uh, and this is how uh, we can do this and maintain, yep, in an organized way. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to ask. And today we're going to, you know, try to work out all these little kinks that we're going to have. Uh, see that everybody knows how to operate in Zoom. Um, and then so when we have guest speakers, uh, we know how to do it in a very organized way, okay? It may need to be, it depends on uh, how our internet goes. It may need to be that at some point we may need to shut off uh, you all's cameras, okay? Depending on how the internet is. Right now, it seems perfect. Is everybody able to hear me? And you see in the little reactions, you can actually do this also. So if you can hear me, yeah. So it's, so it's all going to depend. I think if it's stormy outside, some not, sometimes the internet doesn't work really well. So like I said in the beginning, um, what we need is for you guys to go to the little three dots on top of your, your video there and uh, change your name to who your name is. It's, it, you click on the three dots, put rename, and then what your name is and what county you're from, okay? That way, if you have a question, we can actually call you by name and know exactly who you are, okay? And if you're just now joining us, make sure to put your name and your county in the chat box. Um, I'm on a phone. How do you um, rename yourself? Um, on the phone, there should be the same types of reactions at the bottom. Uh, maybe on the bottom left, it might have a mute or unmute icon, like a little, it looks kind of like a microphone. And if there's a red X through it, that means you're muted or try and click it and it should unmute. I don't know. How do you change your name? Oh, your name. Um, yeah. It may be... Let's see, on the phone, how do you change your name? If there's not three dots, maybe try clicking on your name and see Hold if on. you can. I can rename can Abby. Way. Abby Bolden, right? How do you yes. want me to change it to? What do you want me to um, change it to? I'm in Warren County. Warren County. I'm going to change it for you, okay? Thank you so much. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I guess, you know, again, this first meeting is just going to be like a hello, get to know everybody. Uh, we're going to just kind of work out some of the details and some of the kinks like Dr. Margaret already spoke about. So I guess our first order of business is that this is a project group, not a club. So we will not be electing officers um, or have any an official club meeting if any of you are 
uh, familiar with being enrolled in a traditional 4-H club. So even though you participate through this project group, we still ask that you complete an enrollment form through your local extension office. So I want you to raise your hand if you are an active 4-H member in your county office. That means mom or dad or somebody went there, they filled out an enrollment form and the code of conduct and um, you know all that paperwork to say, yes, you are a member. Wonderful. Very good. And if you haven't, that's okay, but you need to get to your local extension office to get signed up because while we will take enrollment, I mean, um, attendance here through this club, you will need to be a member through your local office. So if you're not sure how to do that, um, stick around after the meeting and we can talk to you and we can figure out who your agent is and where the office is so we can make sure everybody gets signed up to be an official 4-H'er. So um, we are going to, uh, throughout our six, we're going to have six meetings. We will not have a meeting in December, but throughout our six meetings, we are going to present different educational topics ranging all things horses and educational hours will be awarded for full participation. So in order to show or to be eligible to compete at our state contests or you know any of our state level events, you have to have those six hours of education. So by participating here, you'll be able to earn some of those hours and we will send attendance to your agent after every meeting so they can stay up to date on who's participating as well. So there should be an open line of communication between us and your local office. You know, if any questions come up, feel free to reach out to us or your agent. We should uh, be on the same page. So speaking about our state contests and all of our state events, um, let's go through the date book here. So our state contest this year is going to be June 1st through 3rd. Now, um, our the activities you can do at the state contest include horse bowl, hippology, horse judging, and communications. And communications has individual presentation, team presentation, public speaking, and there's also an arts and crafts um, event as well. Our state show is July 2nd through 7th in Louisville, and that's where you get to ride and compete in classes. And then after those two things, we have a regional and national delegation that gets to move on to Southern Regional 4-H Horse Championships that's typically held in Perry, Georgia. I have a question. And that's usually at the end of July. Yes, go ahead. What if you don't have a horse trailer? Like if you have a horse, but you don't have a horse trailer? Right, so um, you would have to uh, maybe try and figure out a way to get that horse transport. Are you talking about for the state show? Uh, yeah, and like what's the show? Is it like show jumping or like what kind of sport is it? Yeah, so we offer disciplines in, we have hunters, we have walking, racking mountain, we have western, we have minis, we have um, speed events. Um, we, we cover the gamut there at the state show. So if you like to jump, we definitely have um, some jumping classes offered there as well. And as far as transportation, you would have to work that out. I don't know if maybe you have a friend that has a trailer or and there's even people who that's their job to haul horses around. You know, you could hire somebody um, to move your horse around for you. If you are interested in attending the state show, there's some deadlines and we're going to um, jump to the website here in a little while. Um, but and then there's also like some other paperwork and things you'll have to provide to be able to show. Uh, quarter, the All-American Quarter Horse Congress, we got to go this last week, um, our national team, and they competed in hippology, horse judging, and communications, and that was a great time, and it's really fun because you get to meet people from all over the country who go to that, and then also um, our Eastern National 4-H Horse Roundup as well, and that's in Louisville, and that happens in early November. So that's just kind of the quick and dirty of the calendar. Like I said, here in a little while, we're going to open up the website and really get to all those dates so you all can start planning, marking down calendars. Is this something you're interested in? Um, and all that. So before we move on, we'd like to do some icebreakers with you all. So um, the first icebreaker we're going to do is, let's see, there's about 24 of you all. I want you to raise your hand if you own a horse. 
I do. Awesome. And that's okay if you don't own a horse. That is just fine. I actually, I don't own a horse right now either. So no big deal. And that's the great thing about this project group and the 4-H clubs, even if you have a county club, um, you don't have to have a horse to be involved. So that's, that's the one thing how, you know, we can, you can always learn something, whether you own a horse or not. All right. How about, let's do it. Let's clear our hands if you can unraise your hand. And I want to do a district roll call. So does everyone know what district they're in? So let's hear it for district one. You can unmute and say something or you can raise your hand. If you're in district one, raise your hand. Harlow, you're in district one. Who else? Is Cora on here still? District one. And the only reason I know that is I used to be a 4-H agent in district one. All right, how about District 2? Raise your hand, District 2. And you can either raise like this or use your icon, that's fine. I don't know what district I'm in. Muhlenberg County, let's see, we can look it up. I must say you might be three. She's in District 6. Six, District Six. Oh, wonderful. There we go. I'll say I'm pulling it up right now. Wonderful. All right. What about District Three? Raise your hand if you're in District Three. I don't know which district I'm in either. Woodford County is District Four. Okay. So District Three is going to be like Southeast Kentucky. All right, District 4, so that's Central Kentucky. I'm not sure what district I am on. Madison is District 4. Let's see, Fleming County's District 1. Carter County's District 1. I don't know what district I'm in either. Adair, I believe you're in District 5. All right, District 5, raise your hand. All right, how about District 6? So this is getting to be West Kentucky, like that South, yeah, there you go, I'm, District 6. I'm District 6, too. Wonderful. And District 7, Far West Kentucky. Wonderful. Very good. Very good to see folks from all over the whole state. This is wonderful. All right, so has anyone ever done a waterfall chat before? Do you know what that is? No. Okay, so a waterfall chat means I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to type your response in the chat box, but do not hit enter. And then when I count to three, everyone hits enter at the same time. So all the responses come waterfalling in really fast. Okay, it's really fun to see. All right, so here's our question. Don't hit enter, okay? Just type it in the box. If you were a breed of horse, what breed would you be? Don't hit enter yet. We're gonna give everyone a minute to think about it. Any breed, what do you think? I think if I were a horse, I'd be a pony of the Americas. I'm short, I'm sturdy, I'm reliable. That's me. <laughs> Got some red in my hair. I always think I was the American red. Book out red. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Does everyone have your answer? All right. On the count of three, hit enter. One, two, three. Oh, lots of quarter horses. I see a Clyde still. I saw some paints come through. Awesome. Does anyone want to unmute and tell me? Tell us why you chose that breed. I chose quarter horse because I like how like it's short because I'm short, <laughs> but it uh, can run like fast. And also like it does barrel racing because I've never barrel raced. I think it seems fun and I, I think I'd like to someday. Nice. Good job, Delaney. Thanks. I like the, Anyone else I like the thoroughbred because I'm fast, it's fast. 
and I like its coat because it's sleek and shiny. And one of my favorite thoroughbreds is a thoroughbred. Secretariat. Secretariat. <laughs> nice. I like the American paint because I like the its coat. Wonderful. I said this to folk. Um, I really don't know why. I just when we go to the horse park, I really like them. I'm kind of tall, you know, they're not the tallest draft, but they're kind of up there. And then they're just they kind of kind of got that calm and kind of lazy look to them, which I don't always have that look sometimes, but I'd like to be at that emotion all the time. Wonderful. Yeah, staying cool, calm, collected, that's a good trait to have. Anyone else want to share? Harlow, do you have your hand up? You want to unmute and tell us what kind of horse you'd be? Um, I really like uh, thoroughbreds because they're I enjoy horse racing, and they're it's fun to watch. I have I have a thoroughbred myself too. Wonderful. I would probably be an Arabian because Arabians are one of my favorite kinds of horses. Awesome. All right, would anyone else like to share what kind of horse they would be? Dr. Camargo, what kind of horse would you be if you were a horse? What breed? I put quarter horse mainly because I'm an easy keeper. I, eat, I like to eat and I'm calm, collected, and that's why. And I'm a hard worker. So that's what quarter horses are, in my opinion. Wonderful. Delaney has a question. What is it? Um, in barrel racing, I know that you can use quarter horses like breeds, but what other breeds like can you use? You can use any breed in barrel racing. The reason why quarter horses or paint horses or even Appaloosas are the most popular mm -hmm. uh, in barrel racing is because their muscle fibers mm -hmm. are what we call fast twitch. So they are the, the three breeds that have the largest amount of fast twitch muscle fibers, which means that they can go really fast, really quickly. Uh, other breeds, you know, have some fast twitch muscle fibers too, but that means that they can probably, they're not as fast as quarter horses, Appaloosas and Paints. That's the reason why they are the most popular ones to do these short races because they have this explosive uh, departure, explosive, you know, they can run really yeah. quickly for short periods of time. Does that answer you your said, question? Yes, but you still like a quarter horse is like the fastest out of the three, the Paint, Appaloosa and Quarter Horse? Not necessarily, no. No, the three breeds of stock horses could be similar now. Yeah. Now there are, there are there are lineages, right? So there, there is breeding specific yeah. for that. So um, if you get a quarter horse that's more ranch bred, he may not be as fast as somebody that has just been working on um, on um, fast quarter horses, like for barrel racing. Okay, thank you. Does the thoroughbred racing have a have a rule about the coat color for a horse or? For, for a horse entering in the thoroughbred racing? For the coat collar? Yeah. They do not. For the thoroughbred racing, they need to be registered with the jockey club. So they need to be thoroughbreds. That's the only rule that they have, is that the both mother and father need to be thoroughbreds registered with the jockey club, whatever like color they are. So like a purebred thoroughbred, it can't be a crossbred or anything? Mm -hmm. To, you, you can for you to ride at home at shows, but not your race. Yeah, and it can only have 18 letters in its name, and it can't sound like other racehorses' names. can't be similar. You don't have to have 18 letters. You can have a, You don't have to necessarily have 18 letters to their names. Yeah, but it has to be 18 or less. Is that correct? Oh, I see what you mean. Max. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right. So can everyone see my screen? All right. Wonderful. So this is our website, um, our 4-H horse program website. 
Real easy, AFS stands for Animal and Food Science, dot CA, which is the College of Agriculture, dot UKY, like University of Kentucky, dot EDU, as in education, slash, and then 4-H youth, and then find the horse picture and click on horse. So that's what all those letters up here in my bar up here mean. So this is our main page, all information about of, um, our upcoming opportunities and results and upcoming events and everything you're going to find right here on this web page. So if you want to take a minute to jot this down, um, you can definitely do so while we're kind of clicking through things here. Um, we have right now, it looks like in our news that we are promoting a, an equine survey. So if you own a horse, come to this website and check it out. It's really important that we um, get as many folks signed up for this as possible so we can know how many horses are in the state. And um, it helps to, you know, protect and help everybody know about the horses and uh, how we can improve on that moving forward. So what else do we have down here? It looks like we have some show results from our state show back in July and our judging and our horse contest and all this good stuff. So this is our main page here. Off to the left, you're gonna find some different tabs. You can learn all about the 4-H horse program by clicking here and here are our objectives, you know, develop leadership, initiative, self-reliance and sportsmanship, other desirable traits and, you know, um, learn responsibility and building character through equine activities, promoting a greater love of animals, and humane treatment towards them. You know, experience pride of working with your horse, pony, or mule and being responsible for its positive welfare. Develop an appreciation and enhance your horsemanship skills. All that, that good stuff. So if there's anyone on here that is not a current 4-H member, this is where you can click right here and you can find your county office right there. And again, I can stay on after if there's anyone who's not quite sure on where their office is, stick around, we can, I'll help you find it, we can find it. So in 2022, our state horse judging contest is going to be on June 1st. And we have our rules and then all of our previous results here too. And then the rest of our horse contest is going to be June 2nd and 3rd in the Hardin County Extension Office. So that's in Elizabethtown. It's pretty central to Kentucky. It might be just a tick to the west. And there, this is where you can have um, your hippology, your horse bowl, um, your communications, your art projects, pretty much anything related to horses, you can enter here. So if you do a communication contest or paint a picture for the fair or anything like that that has to do with horses, say you give a speech, um, about, you know, a war horse or uh, the American quarter horse or, you know, anything related to horses. You can also do that same speech or enter that same project here at our state horse contest. So one project can get you pretty far in the horse program. Is that this year? Yeah. No. Yeah. So this is going to be June and July of this upcoming year in 2022. Mm-hmm. So June 2nd through 7th is going to be our state horse show. And these are some important dates here. Um, we have an eligibility form that pretty much um, kind of registers your horse to be eligible to show with us. And you have to have um, your health papers, your negative Coggins, the flu and rhino vaccine, all of that. Um, has to be submitted. The flu and rhino vaccine has to be administered by June 16th. Uh, May 1st is going to be a big deadline for us. That's when your eligibility form is going to be due. And also those six hours we keep talking about, those six educational hours are going to be due as well uh, by May 1st. What's so the flu and rhino? It's a vaccine um, that your vet will administer to your horse to help keep them healthy. And then your negative Coggins, again, that, sh that shows that your horse does not have EIA. You need the health papers and those, um, everything, again, everything you'll get through 
your vet and then the show verification form as well. You won't get through your vet. You'll have to do some kind of qualifying event prior to the state show, whether you take your horse to a fun show or a sanctioned breed show or a clinic. It has to be something off of your property to show that you've trailered your horse somewhere and they can behave themselves and act safe and be on their best behavior when they're not home um, to show that they can come and compete here at the show. Um, if you'd like to pre-order your state t your state horse show sh uh, show t-shirt, oh, it's a tongue twister. Um, you click right here, and there, we'll give you a quick little survey that you fill out, so you can guarantee a state state horse show t-shirt. And then here we have all of our rules. What? Uh, do they have barrel racing there? Yes, that falls in our speed division. Mm -hmm. So we have drill team, we have saddle seat, minis, walking, racking, mountain speed, which is flags, poles, and barrels, the Western judged, hunters, we have ground handling classes, we have dressage and Western dressage. Um, you know, so we kind of, we, we do it all. So there should be something for everybody here at the state show. Um, let's see what else. Some patterns. These are last year's patterns. All sorts, all results. See, everything you need is going to be right here on this website. Uh, trail riding. We'll move on down. If you like to go trail riding, there is an hour log sheet you can complete and you can uh, participate in the trail riding project by logging your hours and, um, kind of going through all of these different guidelines and videos uh, to learn new things and get out and hit the trails as a 4-H project. There's some Horse Academy books that are a wonderful resource to kind of help guide you um, through your learning if this is something you're interested in. Uh, we have an order form if you'd like to order. They're just very nice and glossy. It's kind of like a magazine. Um, book, or there's also the PDF is available on this website as well, if you would uh, prefer to just download the PDF. And that's not mandatory. This is just stuff um, that are different lessons that you all can work through. And once you feel confident with level one, you can test out of it and earn the pin and then uh, move on up through level two. Let's see. Also on our website, um, lots Lots of resources here, you know, all sorts of educational resources, national resources. We won't go through all this stuff, but if you're looking to learn something, you can always find stuff here on our website. And same with these educational videos. Look at all these. If you want to learn something about equine asthma, well, look, there's a video right there. You can watch it and learn new things. Let's see. They have not come out with the 2022 KDA scholarship yet, but when that gets updated, it'll be reflected here on the website. And then regional and national 4-H. So we've already uh, quickly discussed Southern Regional 4-H Horse Championships, uh, the All-American Quarter Horse Congress, and then the Eastern National 4-H Roundup. And that is um, all of our national teams. So they get uh, to travel to Perry, Georgia, Columbus, Ohio, and then back to Louisville uh, for these big uh, regional and national events. It's a really good time, great learning opportunities. Um, one thing with this club, I don't remember if we've already discussed it or not, but all of the individual things like judging, hippology, individual presentation, public speaking, and um, arts projects, those are all going to be fine for you all to do and to, oh, that's me, um, to do individually through your hours. Now, if you're really interested in joining a horse ball team or doing a team presentation, then you will need to seek another club that is geographically close to you and talk with your agent about doing a cross counting lines. Because through this club, um, we cannot do any team activities. So you will have to find an in-person horse club through 4-H to do horse bowl and team presentation. 
Um, but all of the individual stuff, you are fine um, to get your hours and do that through, through this. Let's see, another fun thing we have started recently is our 4-H horse program newsletter. It's called From the Horse's Mouth. Um, we began it in May, so, you know, you haven't missed too many. If you don't get those, you can find them here. And then also, if you would like to be emailed them every month, we send those out to volunteers, agents, and then parents who'd like to sign up. If that's something you're interested in, um, shoot me a chat box message with your email or just say that you're interested because I have everyone's email and um, we can make sure you're getting those as well. And then last but not least, we have some upcoming events through the equine programs through the University of Kentucky. And you click here, let's see, can you all see the equine program screen? Yes. Did it share with everything? Okay, so it says events, International Liberty Horse Association Championship, COA Equine Forum meeting, you know, the October yearling sale. And I mean, this is a great resource to see everything that's coming up. Um, in not only just UK equine, but they also do a really good job of capturing uh, big community partners and other events going around as well. So check these out. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking for something fun to go to or something you're wanting to see, um, this is a great resource, and they keep it up to date every week. They're adding stuff, taking things off. It's very very relevant. So um, stay up to date with that as well. So now. We will, here, I'll just hit this back button here and that'll bring us back. All right, so let's see, what else, what else is there? What questions do you all have? Or Dr. Camargo, if I forgot anything or anything you'd like to touch on? Um, no, it's just, if you guys want to participate in uh, the horse bow or hippology or horse, I mean, hippology can do uh, as an individual and so can you can do at horse judge and just uh, make sure to let us know so we can put you in contact uh, with the agent and everything. Uh, so yeah, so you don't have, don't feel that you have to do it yourself and alone. We can help every step of the way, okay, to help you with uh, the cross county lines. Okay, so Lily Hicks here said that she would like uh, the, the newsletter. Uh, if everybody, I don't know, um, one of the things Mary Jane is showing to you where the website is, uh, this is a great resource for you guys to have. I need you, if you're going to show horses or participate in any of the competitions, to make sure that you understand the rules, okay? Uh, because since we are not going to be coaching you, uh, we're not uh, your club leaders, um, I need you, but you can ask any questions. I need you guys to go and be very well uh, familiar with the website to understand the rules of the competitions, etc. Okay. Um, what else did I want to say? Yeah, and if you, if you, if your family allows you to go, say on social media, we have a Facebook page. So if you want to go and like our Facebook page, we post a lot of things there too. Uh, and would like, you know, participation of the, the, the youth. If your parents don't allow you, that's fine too. Uh, maybe they can uh, like the page themselves and show to you uh, when there is something that we post. And again, today is just like, we're just introducing how we're going to do this because um, this is a new way to do clubs, okay? Or to do projects, to do hours. So, and that's why we're trying to go through all of these and maybe not the most exciting uh, hour of your life, okay? I feel your pain. <laughs> I think this all sounds really like fun and cool and I would love to do that. The only problem is obviously I don't have a horse trailer or like a truck or anything, but if I did, I definitely really want to do it. <laughs> um, if you, what, from Muhlenberg County, I'm sure there's other people from Muhlenberg County that wouldn't mind uh, giving you a ride. You know what I mean? So it, we just you just need to contact your agent and say, hey, can you put me in contact with other horse kids that would go to shows, etc., cetera, so uh, they can give you a ride. There's a lot of people that do that. They have bigger trailers and they, um, and they can, you know, you just need to be friends with the right people, okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't have, I have a pony and a horse, but neither of them are like eligible for any of that. My pony, he's older and he doesn't, 
not traded <laughs> a lot of this stuff and my horse she's she's about my age she's probably like 12 or 13 but she's not rideable <laughs> so I'm working to try to save up to get a horse of my own that's maybe eligible for some of this stuff <laughs> you need it seems like you need to borrow someone's horse Delaney so you can do that too okay you don't need to own your horse to show your to show a horse in our horse show you can borrow or lease a horse okay so if that's the case, again, contact your county agent and they will know, um, you know, who has riding horses in your area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What, what else other do questions say do you have? Yeah. Oh, um, you know, I took, I wrote, I went through my list here of everything I can think of. I guess we could go through the dates so everyone should have the dates. It's always going to be the third Monday of the month, 6 p.m. Eastern time. The link you all use tonight, that's going to be the same link. So it's a recurring meeting. Um, December, there will be no meeting in December. So we won't meet in December. But other than that, we will meet through April, third Monday. Okay. Um, one other thing that I want to say is that uh, whoever I need to know who, and maybe Mary Jane, maybe this was asked in the in the form when they signed up. Is there a way to know who is senior and who is junior? Is it signed up in the form or no? Um, I don't know if it asks for age. Let's see. That's a really good question. Because here's the thing for the seniors. Okay, I want you guys to start thinking about a topic. Especially those seniors that have done uh, horse clubs in the past. So I want you guys to think about a topic that you, you know, really like. And I want you guys to, if you want, to in one of these next five uh, meetings that we're going to have, to do a little presentation, okay? So it's going to be like a five-minute presentation that you can do. So you can practice presenting in front of us. And you can practice presenting in front of, um, you know, younger kids. And we can, um, you know, start preparing you for life. Because that's the idea of being in 4-H is so you can be developed as a citizen. Okay. So if you're interested, you're a senior and you're interested in doing a little presentation to present in our group. Because uh, you can add that uh, if you, you know, in your resume. Um, you let me or Mary Jane know, and we're going to work with you to tailor the presentation for the group and to make sure that you're giving correct information. So it's not going to be just like you feel like this is what you're doing and you're going to present. Uh, we need to make sure that the information you're saying is correct. Okay. So that being said, don't hesitate to ask uh, to let me and Mary Jane know if you're interested in that. Yep. Emma, does that answer your question? Email me or Mary Jane. Emma? Okay, all right, sounds good. What district am I in? And I'm a junior. <laughs> Bela, is that your name? Yeah. You're in Scott County, you're in District 4. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Your presentation can also be like how, you know, a little recipe, how to make horse treats or how to, you know, Avery does a lot of arts and crafts, how to do like how to build, uh, uh, you know, like a, a, a tool little box or whatever. It can be something that uh, I just want you guys to start preparing for uh, your future careers as adults. Okay. Thank you. That sounds exciting. I know. I just I'm came up with boxes. That. Isn't there also like rider competitions that you can enter, like with the you know fake horses, the model horses? Isn't there like stuff we have like that too? I'm sure there is. Not in our program, I don't, but I'm sure there is out there. Uh, Briar Fest. They have Briar That's Fest every year at the horse park. Mm -hmm. Right. I love Briars. <laughs> If you go to the Briar webpage, you can find that. They have a whole section on how to show them. I think you just bring them to the Briar Fest and you enter. 
Or at least you enter on the website. I'm not really sure. I've never done it. All I know is that it's on the website. Gotcha. Okay, Camila, you have a question. What's that, babe? What district am I in? Fleming County, District 1. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bela, do you still have a question? No, ma'am. No? Okay. All right. So uh, when we have speakers or subjects that we're going to be talking about for the next meetings, we're going to let you know. Uh, so you can sign up and be ready to learn. Okay. We will also, uh, we're recording this meeting so we can send it uh, back to you guys also um, after the videos have been uh, recorded and posted. So in case you have any questions about anything, you can always watch it again. Sounds good? Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. Any question about life in general? No, ma'am. No? Um, I don't know what district I'm in. I just told you district four. Hancock County? Oh, Hancock County. I thought it was Scott County. Hmm. Oh. I don't know. What county surround Hancock County? Davis County and Ohio. Um, Davis County and Ohio County. District She's six. in District 6. District 6, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Well, I guess um, if yeah, no one else has any other questions, we can end the meeting for this evening. Again, if you have not put your name and county in the chat box, if you could just stick that there for us. Um, you know, we'll go and confirm attendance and get that out to your respective agents. And if you are not a current 4-H member, so if you have not filled out an enrollment form, why don't you stick around and we can help you find your 4-H agent um, in your county so we can make sure you get signed up. Well, I hope everyone's excited. I know we're really excited to have this club and this opportunity. So we will see you all uh, next month, third Monday, which is November. I'm looking up real quick. 15th. I think November Emma 15th. has a question. Emma has a question. Yes. Go ahead, Emma. Okay, so how do I know if I'm a junior or a senior because it's a little confusing to me because my birthday is in October. It's October 30th. So am I a junior until then and then I'm a senior after that because I'm turning 14. No, you're a junior and you're going to go on, uh, 13 and above is, is senior, no? Or 13 and below? 14. Yeah, 14 so you're, gonna, and you're turning 14. In a couple of weeks, is that right? Yes. So next year, so starting on January 1st, you become a senior. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, if you guys don't have any more questions, you can um, disconnect. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.